it's Trevor Leggett. Welcome to the Leggett Podcast. Okay, right, so hello again. It's the Leggett Podcast, Carl. Yeah. We're yeah. here again. Yeah. <laughs> right, so today we're going to have a chat about, well, property market and how you buy a property, and why yeah. you buy and what to look out for, and you know, pitfalls and Obst- obstacles, obstacles and obstacles. And, and how it works, basically, yeah, Trevor. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I bought a few properties in France. Yeah. You've bought a few properties yeah. in France of your own as well. Which yeah. You've bought, done up and sold. I've done the same. Yeah. I own most of our offices now, yeah. which I've bought and restored. Yeah. And I've made some rickets. I'm sure you have. Well, do, well yeah. It's a, it's, it's a, it isn't a foolproof system. No. Uh, and, 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 you know... And judgment's certainly not foolproof. No, but you've got, there's an element of risk always, isn't there? Always. Basically. It's a gamble. You either, always. You know, you've, at some point, you've got to plunge and, you know, you can limit them, thank God. And uh, one of the things you've got to look out for, obviously, is the condition of the property. Yeah. And I think that we're quite... It's unusual, isn't it, in France? Still to this day, a survey yeah. is not an obligation. We've got the DPE, no. we've got the, the diagnostics, diagnostics yeah. but it really doesn't constitute a full building survey, does it? Really? No, it doesn't it, 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 in any form. And 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 uh, you know, uh, you know, as a British person, uh, and yeah. that still and that still basically seems extremely foreign to me. I know. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm so, surprised that the banks lend without it, and I, I, it still beats me that they don't even ask for evaluation. No. Our valuation is the valuation. If the agent thinks it's that, that and the client is prepared to pay it, that's good enough for the bank because, yeah, of course, the bank lend on the affordability of the client, not the value of the property, because they never go out with the idea that they're going to have to repossess it. No, no. And as you say, what, what they basically do is just look at their income. Uh, they, what do they call it? The taux on debt mall. The taux on debt mall. Uh, and that's currently at 35%. Yeah. So... So would you say get a would you say get a survey or not? I mean, it depends. I think. Oh, I, I never have done. I yeah, never have done. I wouldn't advise. You and I know about buildings. No, don't no, we? no, I wouldn't advise for or against it. Do what you feel. Do what you're comfortable with. Yeah. Uh, but I've always felt comfortable with the diagnostics. Uh, uh, the fact that uh, the fact that the banks just lend on affordability. So I, I going through the diagnostics. What is the diagnostics? What do they consist of currently? Well, I mean, you've got termites. Termites, yeah, you've got yeah. Foss inspection. Which yeah. is your drainage system? Absolutely. Uh, but just comparing it to uh, the UK electric, survey. System. Absolutely. System. Well, that's yeah. superior to the UK survey system because well, uh, the UK survey. The UK. Uh, absolutely. No, no, it isn't. So it it's isn't a structural survey. Uh, well, it's. I've been so long out of the UK now. No, I can't no. remember. No, it's a general inspection. Unless you go for a, a, a full engineer's report, right. which which is hugely expensive, and some people say overkill. They just basically check the value, and that's what's called a valuation. Right. Uh, you, you can have what's in between what's called a home buyer's report, uh, which will check for general oh, electricity okay. installation, yeah. go up in the roof and see if the beams and the rafters are sound, etc. Didn't they have a pack in England at some point where they actually did a sort of like a yeah. equivalent of diagnosis yeah. report? I can't oh, remember that. Just... Oh, I can't remember the life of me anyway. <laughs> but I mean, generally speaking, it is quite a different process, isn't it? I mean, it is a one, once, you've, once you've made your offer and it's been accepted in writing, you are pretty much committed. Hips pack. It's called a hips pack, well, wasn't it? That's it, yeah. hips, yeah. that was it. I didn't uh, last long, did it? No. Uh, uh, not in that form. <laughs> uh, uh, but, uh, but as you say, you know, it's... God, I wish I'd do that with the bloody diagnostic, you know, the, the audit, well, the NGT. The, the, uh, the, do is uh, the energy that, audit, well, well yeah. Well, well, rubbish, that. Well, yeah, so, you know, it's, it, <laughs> it, 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 you know, as you know, it's, it's the way that things are going, Trevor. Well, it's EU with legislation. The, you know, yeah, absolutely. It's making everybody insulate yeah. their homes so well. And now you've got this problem where you've got to spend so much money on your rental properties that yeah. no one can afford to get the rent that they need to get the return on investment after having spent all the money making them conform. No. Because there's not people out there who can afford the rents that they need to charge, so it's all a bit daft, really. No, but well, well, and plus the fact, you know, you know, some people say, well, well, it reduces your long-term bills, and if you save those savings up over the 20 years that you're in the property, it more than pays for it, but... Uh, but look, you know, I, yeah, but don't you think it's silly when they make you want to put like dry lining on a beautiful stone house or mad. insulate the outside of your castle Absolutely. with polystyrene insulation? As if you're going to do that. Absolutely, but, uh, but, uh, but you have got a choice whether you do it or not. And and yeah. and, and certainly for where I'm sitting today, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't corrupt, for choice of better words, the the, the fabric, the property, yeah. in the interest of being eco-friendly. 
Yeah, I'd do everything I could up in the loft, for example, to you know, you know, lag the loft properly, etc. Cool. Uh, double glazing. Yeah, double glazing. There the wood, you go. You know, wooden, yeah, wood wooden frame. Frame. absolutely. Not, not so it's not to compromise the structure and the and the uh, style. Yeah, and the style exactly. Yeah, you know, you you know, you know more about architect architecture than me. But at the end of the day, I believe it can be eco friendly and still be. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's you know, got to attractive. remain beautiful yeah. aesthetically. It's got to remain something that you want to live in. Well, what you just mentioned, wooden windows with double glazing. You know, yeah, yeah. it's expensive, yeah. but but it it, it, it maintains the, the integrity of the original yeah. building, whether it's a Maison de Metz, Maison de Metz. people buy homes yeah. in France because they're beautiful homes, beautiful yeah. stone-built homes that look amazing. Yeah, absolutely. With, you know, they, they, mm. they, they want the lovely beams and terracotta floors and stone flags yeah. and... You know, that's what turns people on, let's be frank. I mean, it, they yeah. are stunning French homes. No, I agree. And it's that word again in the property market, balance. It's, yeah. it's getting that balance. You don't think people are obsessed with this, like, DPE ratings if they're too low? And now that the fact you've got to have the, the audit energy, yeah. and then somebody comes along and tells you how much it's going to cost and bring it up to standard, mm. which you're probably never going to do anyway, because no. in order to do what they ask you to do, you're going to make the house look... Horrible. No, and even if it's get, and, <laughs> and even if there's a, a rating there to uh, 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 let's bring it up to a C rating of twenty thousand euros, just for an example, all of the agencies are including our competitors that I know are basically pricing pricing the asking price with that bearing in mind, yeah, not, yeah, not to yeah. take well, that. Well, we've had further. plenty of buyers, fake yeah. buyers, pull out yeah. because of it. Because oh, yeah. they're scared the living daylights out of them, coming around and saying, "We, well, you've got to spend hundred grand on this house. It's a perfectly good house." Yeah. And the ironic thing is that they don't even get it if they pull all the radios out. We have one or two clients turn around and say, we'll take the central heating out and you don't have one. Did you know that? That's the rules, yeah. Well, that's ridiculous. Yeah, I know. That's absolutely it is ridiculous. ridiculous. <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, whilst, whilst energy conservation and energy consumation is a really, really important mm. subject, there needs to be a balance there. Listen, I'm an ecologist. I, you know, I, yeah. I don't put well, any poisons on my land. I've no, got solar panels. That, yeah. We're completely independent at home. We run yeah. at home off solar Electric, power, yeah. exactly. batteries, say you're solar, yeah. from my own water supply. Yeah. But I'm certainly not going to cover my house in polystyrene. No. No. And, mm. and I think, and I think uh, that, uh, that example is an extreme that some mm. people will go to. Not many. But also, leaving a property with single glazed windows uh, and and paying ten thousand euros a year in energy bills, oh, course, I think that's yeah. the other extreme. Yeah, course, so it's that balance, Trev. I think you know. Yeah. Uh, no, of course. Yes. We all want to. We all want to. You know, not ruin the planet. That's yeah, exactly. We want to try and conserve the planet as long as we can. Yeah. But I do think sometimes they've gone a little bit too far. I do. It hasn't really been thought about. I do. I do. You know. you know, you can save some money, but at the end of the day, it, it, do you it's the balance the there. Not daft enough to be able to work out himself. You know, it's, oh, it's, I know France is a nanny state, and oh, it's always mm. we have to do everything for everybody yeah. and lead you down the road by your hand and put you right through the doors and what have you. But yeah. I do find that irritating with France. Yeah, I know, no, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, I've got yeah, I, 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 I've got ultimate, ultimate faith in 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 it. In our purchases, uh, yeah. that usually they come from international climes, uh, different areas, different uh, right. countries, and they've and they've and they've earned their living, and they've uh, and they've earned their place to buy a place here. Yeah, of so course, of course. so so I think common sense prevails. I do. Yeah. Uh, in well, the majority well, 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 of cases, where we're going now is that the banks well, have started to say, "Well, we're not lending money on these properties unless you take into the account the amount of work that yeah. needs to be done to bring them up to scratch." Well, yeah. So then they have to include that in the overall loan or the, or the overall financement of the building. So Absolutely. making it even more difficult to get finance. So I mean, coming on to finance. Mm. Well, I mean, let's face it, for non-residents, it's a very, very difficult market to get finance at the moment. Very, it, very it's extreme. It's extremely tough. Uh, yeah. They, The French lenders at present don't see international buyers as a priority to lend to, uh, in my view, unless you're a high net worth client. Well, that's well, another there's story. Not, there's not many banks prepared to do it for many reasons. I mean, the mm. most, first reason is risk. Yep. The second reason, I think, is that they need, you know, dedicated people who speak yeah. both languages and need dedicated service. It takes more time. Um, there's not actually enough of that business because, well, obviously, international sales in France are, you know, what we, we, we in, in the good years we've been doing 1.2 million transactions a year. Yeah. 
I mean, this year is likely to be probably around seven or eight hundred thousand. Yeah, yeah, I guess yeah. I'm saying, yeah. you know, yeah, I'm not, yeah, yeah, I'd have said that. It's going to be three or four hundred thousand yeah. transactions yeah. light, isn't it? Yeah, on last year, on last year, yeah, yeah, a third down, and yeah. and uh, and and you know, the holy grail of estate agencies providing providing the service where we increase our market share, and you yeah. know, and continue on by by, by taking the largest slice of the cake, really. Yeah. Uh, you know, with everything that we've been doing over the last over the last twenty five years. Well, I think I think the the the, the 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 buying power now of an international buyer is probably greater than it was Absolutely. last year. Yeah, I 100%. mean, you know, obviously we all know cash is king in this market, and uh, and, I, and I think it's it's turned, as you say, it's a balanced market at the moment. Yeah. Could easily tip to being a buyer's market. Yeah, when you think so, in the next. Possibly. Could easily become Possibly. a buyer's market. You know, a bit about, as you say, it's finding points that can go yeah. either way. Well, it's been a seller's market for the last five years. Well, so. absolutely. Yeah. And last Easter was at its peak where there was three buyers for every new property. At the moment, there's one buyer for every new property. Mm. So, 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 you know, that, uh, 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 that'll have implications on the market. There's no doubt about that. In the sense that, that I think we're going to have more of a stable market rather than, uh, yeah. uh, rather than the market that uh, that well, spirals I mean, out of control. It, during that market, that boom market, anyone could have been sure. a state agent. Absolutely. And they were. Let's be Absolutely. fair. Absolutely. I mean, the likes of some of the resos that have recruited seventeen thousand, yeah. eighteen thousand yeah. agents. You know, I mean, I can't see a lot of those are going to stick around no. they're going to find it tough no it, which is a good yeah. thing because there are too many people in the market really, well yeah people. and 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 <laughs> it was all about the seller it was yeah. a it, it it was a vendor-led market i.e by definition there were three yeah. buyers for every seller and now it's one-on-one -on -one, so it's nicely it, it's fi it's finely balanced and what would you say about like honestly finding your absolutely perfect yeah. property i mean why you know you've got to compromise on stuff haven't you you've got to yeah. You've got to compromise on something. I would always say, frankly, that position, position, always in the UK, but you can't be as fussy as you can here. You can actually yeah. get excellent positions in this country, places you can dream of in, in the UK. Popula Centre of plots, usually. Population yes, yeah. density is a third of what it is in England. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's three times. Yeah, absolutely. Three, three times. times yeah, yeah, absolutely. Three times the space. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, no, uh, finance is tough for international buyers in France. Uh, they're not a priority, so so I'll, I wouldn't go as far to say in this balanced market the cash is king, but ultimately uh, it's a lot more attractive proposition to a seller, whether an international yeah. seller or a French seller, than French finance. Yeah, and I think vendors are actually getting wind the same way. Look, you know, like now is a good time to sell. I would agree. I think it probably is a good time to sell. Yeah, I think it's a good time to buy as well because the supply I can do. get even shorter. It can I get do. smaller. <laughs> I do. It, you know, it, I, I can't see the supply side, you yeah. know, increasing to levels where we're going to see price drops. So, no. like you say, it's an it's interesting time. Yeah, and it's that finely balanced that that you know, two in three, as you know, a two in three of sellers go on to buy something else in France. Yeah. So, so if they even if they were to lose five percent. Yeah. On, on their sale, they'll make up the five percent by taking then off they'll their purchase. And the vendor turns around, you always and you turn up and you look at the value of the house, and they turn and they say, "Well, the boiler's new." And you look at it and you think, <laughs> "Well, it's not that new, is it? It's like twenty years old." I go, "Well, it was new when we put it in." Oh, I've got a new roof. When did it have a new roof? Thirty years ago. Nineteen nineties. Yeah, <laughs> it needs replacing every thirty years. Right. Yeah. You walk around and go, "It's got a new bathroom." Yeah, new kitchen, I you think, oh, that ain't new. None of that's new. No. <laughs> No, I know absolutely right. But uh, no, I can, I can, as I say, I can see a finely, I can see a, a, a finely balanced market there, and mm. uh, and you know uh, the French have got a word as you know, get cachet. But occasionally, you get the old property mm. with cachet. Uh, and then it's in every, the cost of building work, it's gone through the bloody roof. Oh yeah. I mean, I've been funny. I'm mean, getting quotes through that we had quotes a couple of years ago for stuff. Go on. Oh my God, honestly. I mean, you know. I mean, windows, for example, a pair of doors. A pair of doors used to be like 300 quid, 400 quid for a pair of doors, you know, patio doors. Now they're like 1,200, 1,300, even from the pair, not from any fancy made to no, measure, no, no. you know. I was in there the other day, I went over with, with my brother because we went to get a, 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 a couple of kitchen units sorted for his house, you know, the one he bought up on yeah. the hill. Yeah, mate, yeah. And uh, the kitchen units were all right, quite reasonable, but look at the price of the joinery, it's almost doubled in the last yeah. few years, it's ridiculous. 
So is that going to have an impact on house prices or not the cost of construction work? Because if you're going to buy someone to renovate now, it's going to cost you a hell of a lot more to renovate than it would have done a few years ago. Well, yeah, so I think it's already suppressing the price of land value. Yeah. Because, uh, because buyers, are, uh, buyers are knowing that they've actually got to build something yeah. on there that's probably twice as expensive but as really it was five years really, ago. the properties are better value for money. Renovated properties are yep. better value for money than they've ever been because when you look at the cost of construction yeah. and the cost of the new building, I mean, how many of the developers that we know are got projects on hold because yep. they've just got no, they, they, they've got no visibility on... Even the material prices, it's just starting now, they're saying. Some of the guys are saying to me, they're okay. It's starting to level out material prices. And some things have actually dropped, like timber prices are starting to come down a little bit. And, right, okay. You know, tiles went through, the, you know, went through the plumbing roof, everything. Yeah, but uh, 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 what you're saying about renovated properties being valued, well, affordability, if you look at it, sort of, yeah. sort of in the Sharon, for example, yeah, you can still get a four-bedroom detached property in an acre of land with a little swimming pool in there yeah. about, about, about 175,000 yeah yeah so that's cheap yeah yeah if you go if you go north of Longulin, if especially north of Longulin, yeah. if you go north yeah. of Longulin, yeah. uh, 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 well, uh, definitely in the Limousin you can definitely find absolutely uh, uh, in this uh, part uh, of the country probably 250 300 absolutely yeah. but but the property values, mm. affordability quite funny because you can't wait to down there from Paris this morning who I was talking to now oh, right God, that was a laugh, honestly. They were telling me, they said, oh, you're at the bottom end of the market then across the country, you know, that whole thing. I said, they said, 350,000. I said, no, we're not, we, you know, they've come from Paris, so 350 grand a studio flat, you know. Obviously, same as in London. And I said, no, 350 grand here will buy you a five bedroom house for Singapore yep. and a bloody massive garden no bath. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. In his face, he looks at me, I went, oh, yeah, I suppose so. Absolutely. I think it might be funny, the bottom end of the market here is 100 grand. Yep. It's not 350. Mm. 350 is the top end of the market. Yeah. So, uh, so for all the listeners, basically, the affordability uh, uh, to explore that and to explore the value, especially the renovated properties, like you said, but they're, they're incredible, incredible value, value for money. When you incredible look at the cost value. of the materials, the cost of the labour, the cost of the things, the, things and the, the value for money that they represent right now is better than it's ever been, I think. It's incredible. You're never going to be able to restore them for the price that they were restored Absolutely. 10 years ago. No. Absolutely. And even if you take neighbouring countries like Holland, Germany, etc., uh, France is a half or a third of the price uh, than the really German rural markets. Yeah, money. absolutely excellent value for money. Uh, World class public health system. Uh, communications are decent enough most of the time. Well, the infrastructure is second to none. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're half an hour on the train to Bordeaux, we're yeah. two hours in the past. No, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and as we say, affordability. Is I, I, I wouldn't buy something in the Go middle on. of like too far from a town. Though. You know, one of the things I've noticed is that when you, I think 30, 40 minutes for me from a city is like, it's about you right. know, it's about right. Right. You don't yeah. want to be two hours from a no, city no, no, if no. you can help it. I mean, unless you're quite happy to live in completely isolated life, yeah. some people want. I'd prefer not. I'd prefer about half yeah. an hour away from a, a, from a centre, from a yeah. centre, whatever that centre is. Yeah. Uh, and 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 you know, I, I I would say the vast majority of our of of, of the Leggett South Force are usually based within forty five minutes of a centre somewhere. Yeah. Uh, they mirror that, yeah. and I think and I think that's the perfect combination. I do. Uh, but affordability is extra. Finance is tricky uh, to an international buyer, as we know. Uh, it's, not, it's not showing any signs of easing up no. until January. I spoke to I one of the guys from the bank yeah. the other day. Right. And uh, he's setting up a new structure for a new bank in January. And I mean, that should be running by, you know, early 2024. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So that'll be a new supply to the non-resident market. Okay. And there's a few things happening, bubbling around in the background. Um, but, I mean, the, the, the shock to the market, obviously, over the last 12 months has yeah. left us high and dry with it. So the mortgage suppliers... Yeah, the banking it. pressures are still there. Yeah. Private banking will still supply the bigger buyers. Yeah, absolutely. The high over 1.5 yeah. million, yeah, not absolutely. a problem. Not yeah. a problem. Uh, uh, but, uh, uh, but finance in the two hundred to five hundred thousand range is probably best. He, uh, 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 is basically cash or or basically finance yeah. from the country of origin of where your domicile is. Really, I suppose, Trevor. You know. Yeah. Is there anything else you can think of? Good tips buying a property. Always go with your heart because for international buyers yeah. such as me, yeah, this this is still a massive adventure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been here fifteen years, but you know I, when I still it's right, love that. You? When you absolutely in, you know it's right. Absolutely, yeah. I, I, I agree with you, Carl. Yeah. I, I think you know you follow your heart, and your heart normally tells you what, what yeah. it's the right place. 
Because it's about where you can, you know, you get that feeling, don't you, when you know it feels right. Yeah. And the problem is, is quite often when you lose them, trying to find another one quite the same. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I bought my cafe do you remember years ago, I bought that place for five and a half thousand euros. I mean, it was on a Sunday lunchtime, I was mm. half pissed in the pub. Yeah. <laughs> and the bloke said, I said, I was having a couple of pastitas with one of the lads down the bar. Blue. And he said, uh, I said, God, you know, I love it around here. He said, have you got any, you know, I haven't got a lot of money, but do you know if there's any houses for sale? Yeah. And he said, uh, he said, and we, were, we shouldn't, we shouldn't say about drink driving, should we, mm. really? But I mean, we yeah. got in the car and we drove down to have a look at this house. And uh, he said to me, he said, well, the roof's just fallen in. And the bloke who's selling it is absolutely desperate to sell it. I bought that for five grand. And I just, you know what, the building, about any sense I wouldn't have bought it. It was a bloody wreck. The roof had gone through. The floorboards had gone. The tiles were on the ground floor. Uh, but the situation was, and I still live there, as you know, yeah. today. The situation when I walked there, even in the pouring rain, it was just yeah. perfect. I think it's fair to say that, 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 that had is, potential for five and a half thousand euros. <laughs> yeah. Didn't it? I think that's fair it to say, Trev, yeah. You know what? I couldn't afford it at the time. I gave him two and a half grand. And the following year, I had to give him the other two and a half grand that I owed him. Because I needed the other three grand that I had to repair the roof. Yeah. Otherwise, the whole building would have ended up on the deck. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a, it's a, yeah, it, it, and, it, and it is a passion. Property is a passion. Uh, and and yeah, it brings you joy, doesn't it? Yeah, the right place. It, does. it does. Yeah, it does. And 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 you can, <coughs> and it's a place where you live your life. Yeah. Uh, and and you know, you're, I think I'm, that's what I'm getting at is it's a situation, isn't it? Absolutely. It's, 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 because you can get those amazing situations in France. I think in why deprive yourself? You know, go for the good spot. And there's so many good bargains still to be had. Not oh, quite God. at that level, five and a half thousand euros. No, but, but that was 1993. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, cheap back then. Yeah. But, but it's, it, it's common places and beautiful locations. Prices as low as a third as, as the UK. Yeah. Uh, if not a quarter of it's a renovation, the price. Oh, no, so I think there are properties that are available that are just never be available in the UK. Yeah, I agree. Price. No, that's true. That's true. No, uh, not just the pricing. It's just the location. Yeah. just wouldn't get them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, uh, but, yeah, and, and, and this is where you can, uh, you, uh, you can be who you want to be. You can start afresh and do what you like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you, you know, and, uh, Well, we did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, and a personal message, just as Trevor knows, the first person that I met when I came to France was Trevor, who showed me a house. He, he, he was, you weren't he, sick in the car. <laughs> <laughs> Most of my clients were sick in the car. I was <laughs> looking at my Aldi home. I was the only estate agent with a Subaru in Pretza. <laughs> WRX. He's a terrifying. <laughs> he's almost looking in the mirror and they'll be going green and I've got, oops, I better slow down. <laughs> I've been trying to get four visits in before lunchtime. <laughs> no, I know, you know, we, we bought a holiday home and, 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 and the rest is history. And it's been some journey. All, most of it very, very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think the support network here mm. um, amongst fellow internationals that live around here, it, if, if you want to be included in both communities, there's a support ne English speaking support network here. And I think that was important. Yeah, it's very for me different when I got now to what it was when, when I arrived. And there were, you well, know, yeah. The, 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 you, know, you had to speak French, didn't you? Mm. I mean, now, to be honest with you, most of the bars and restaurants around here are owned by Brits. Mm. Yeah. And, and in most areas, in the door door and all the shower yeah. it's just. Same story, you rock up into any village anywhere. The other day I was in a place called Mel up in the Deserve. I walked into the yeah. restaurant and it was owned by a British couple. I mean, the amount of times that happens yeah. is ridiculous. It seems like you know, small bars and restaurants mm. in the countryside in France, 50% of them must belong to either Dutch or British owners. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, internationals. And at the end of the day, I think, I think having, that, having that support network around you, especially when you buy first of all, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. very rarely someone buy, makes their first purchase in France from the UK or the States could speak fluent French. It doesn't happen. No. So you do need some sort of life and some sort of support network. Yeah, and everybody says, oh, you've got to speak French, but in your late in life, it is quite hard. I mean, luckily, of course it we is. speak fluent French because we've been here since we were younger, but for a lot of people, it is hard. But I don't think it's, yeah. a, it's, a, you know, it's, not, it's not a deal breaker. No, it's not at all. It, uh, 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 it's not at all. And, and depending on what region you're looking at, you can have... I won't say a cheap property, you, but you'll have the property you want, at the price you want, renovated the way you want it, surrounded yeah. by people that you can communicate with. 
Yeah, yeah that and that's really are all important. lovely as well. Yeah. You're not going to get burgled, you're not going to no. get trouble. You know, it's like I, I, I'd leave all the keys in my car, so I shouldn't say yeah. that. No, 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 I'd, no, it's you know, like minded well, people. Yeah. I never lock the back door, and that's yeah. you know, the, uh, uh, I'm the last time you went to bed at night and locked the door. No. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. So, yeah, that'll do. I think there's a few tips for you guys. Anyway, it's nice to see you again. Bye. Yeah, yeah, good to see you. <laughs> <laughs>